Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Hope you're safe where you are. Got something entirely different today. I uh, really am not looking that much for sponsors and things like that, but uh, every once in a while some company will contact me and offer to send me something and I will uh, either agree or disagree. Most generally, I disagree and say, please don't send it, I'm not interested, or whatever. Uh, often it's something that's not even related to music. But this was a little different. An instrument company, I'm sure trying to make a presence on the web, asked me if I'd be interested in reviewing a couple of their instruments. And I said, well, if you want to send them, I will give them a fair review. I'm not much into unboxing videos. <laughs> I mean, we all know how to take something out of a box. But I did think you might be interested in seeing how these arrive. Here they are. No, they're not little coffins, uh, you know, from the uh, plague here that's going around. These are just, uh, you know, bags. And they sent me two violins. And I think there's a, you know, a lower level and an upper level violin is what it appears to be. This uh, bag has already been opened. And this is an oblong case. Let me just say, this is from the Glary Music Company. On the web, I believe, is glarymusic.com, G-L-A-R-R-Y music.com. And you can check them out. This is a 4-4 violin, at least that's what it's supposed to be. And we'll see, this is the first time I've looked at it. I have not opened it. And you can see it looks pretty nice. They come disassembled like this, so if you were to order one, you need to know how to set them up. Here is the bridge and a little uh, paper, wrapped in paper. Okay, I will tell you my first look at it right here. The, the bridge is a student quality bridge. It is um, a little thick, in my opinion, uh, in terms of sound quality. But then again, being for a student, you might expect that a little bit. You know, the thing about violins, if they're set up perfectly, and I'm not picking on this violin, I'm talking all violins. Uh, it, the thing about violins is that uh, if they're set up perfectly, they're just ready to fall apart because everything is held in by friction. And this bridge is just held there by string tension and that's it. So, um, you know, with that in mind, a little stouter bridge for children might be the way to go. This looks to be a fairly decent looking uh, violin I, and the appointments look pretty nice. All Almost sure just by looking without really inspecting that this is this is real wood uh, tailpiece real wood uh, fretboard this looks like very high quality chin rest and the uh, tuning keys look to be high quality as well so so some of it is is very high quality uh, to be perfectly honest with you the bridge not so much it's just kind of a, a lower quality uh, piece of wood for a bridge just looking at what's in the case it looks like perhaps this is some rosin I'm assuming I again you got to be smarter than the case here. I don't know how to open it. You push through this hole it looks like and it seems to be opening but it's kind of yep that's some uh, rosin for your bow. There's uh, a, uh, a shoulder rest. It looks to be of uh, a reasonable quality. It is uh, pretty much all plastic but then again it's it should serve the purpose. There's a uh, set of straps here to put around the case if you want to carry it over your shoulder. There is a bow here we'll look at in a moment. Let's see what else is in the case. Looks like we have a contact microphone, which is nice that they supply that. This is uh, more or less a uh, piezo type contact and you can plug it into your tuner then. You could snap this on your bridge as a matter of fact. They also supply a little tuner and I'm sure this would plug into the tuner but let's just go ahead and open it up to be sure. It's nice that it comes with all this. There's batteries included which is nice. A little tight there getting it out but and there's instructions with it and yes it would allow you to plug in your uh, clip there of course. So it looks like a, a reasonable reason Reasonable quality tuner and then it, it comes with a set it looks like an additional set of strings or at least yeah it looks like it's the full set okay well we'll set this up a little bit and show you what it looks like and sounds like well I've cleaned off the area here so I can get serious about setting this up my intention is to set this up play it for you so you can see what it sounds like and just give you a good honest review of it and my first inclination is that this is actually fairly
really high quality for you know what we're dealing with. I mean, this is actually a pretty darn nice instrument. It really is. I wouldn't tell you that if it wasn't. You understand now that even though I got this free, it's of no, there's nothing that I'm benefiting from this whatsoever. In other words, I'm going to donate this to a school. So like this isn't going to be mine and I didn't, I'm not saying these things just so you understand. I'm not saying anything nice or bad uh, for any particular reason. I've got no dog in this fight, if you will. I'm just trying to give you a good, honest, open review. Seriously, this is very good quality stuff. I'm, I'm actually totally blown away on this one. Now, keep in mind, this was their upper, you know, upper level model. This appears to be real ebony. There is a real mother of pearl inlay there, uh, just for decoration, you know. This, uh, if you look at this, appears to either be ebony or rosewood, and I'm not really sure. I would assume it's an ebony, but it's, uh, you know, it's you can find ebony that's not not solid black. Grain wise, it looks more like ebony because the grain is so fine. But uh, I, you know, I can't say that for a hundred percent certainty on that. Now there may be specs on the um, enclosed material, which I haven't read. There may also be specs online and I will ask Melissa to look that all up and verify that online. And she'll, she'll type a text box telling you if this is ebony or rosewood, if she, if she finds that out. This appears to be uh, ebony. It does not even look like it's painted. Uh, based Based on what I can see, it looks like it really is ebony. And that's just based on experience, guys. I mean, I could be fooled. These pegs look very high quality also. Um, in fact, they've got the little uh, pearl inlay and stuff. So, I mean, like you don't just do that kind of extra detail on cheap pegs. You know what I'm saying? It would be silly. So these are high quality pegs. So that's telling me something right there. The wood is high quality. It's curly maple. It appears to be solid wood based on looking at the edge and everything. It uh, And based on, on the edge of this, this is solid wood too. So this is not plywood. This is a carved top uh, instrument, carved back instrument. The scroll looks decent. I mean, seriously, if you're talking a student level violin, I would give this a at least a solid nine, if not a little better. I'd give it an absolute absolute solid 10 and a half if they had included a decent bridge with it. It blows me away that high quality as this part is, that the bridge is really very minimal quality. It's a it's not even a high grade of uh, maple. It's kind of, I mean, it is a quarter sawed or almost quarter sawed piece of maple, but it's not a high grade piece of maple, if you will. There's just differences. How do I know that? I can tell by looking. I mean, I, you know, I've been doing this a long time. The uh, shoulder rest, while it's not super high grade, it's uh, certainly adequate, I believe. I'm not going to tell you that the shoulder rest is uh, going to, you know, win any awards or anything, but it seems to be adequate for the purpose. This is the most surprising part of all. The bow, it's got weight to it. Uh, you know, most cheap bows don't have weight to them. They're real light. This is a high, high grade piece of wood. I don't know the name of the wood. You know, Pernambuco is the best. I seriously doubt it's Pernambuco, but if uh, Melissa can find that out. She'll put it in the text box on what kind of uh, bow it is. I can tell you it's a quality. It's not a cheap, cheap, uh, you know, outfit. Um, the, the wrapping and things is, you know, it's not the best, uh, but it's not the worst I've seen by any stretch. It's just kind of mediocre on the wrapping, serving there. And the adjustment seems to be fine. The uh, It does have the real pearl eye. This does appear to be ebony on the frog. You know, it does appear to be real horsehair, not the synthetic stuff. So as far as I can tell, you know, everything's quality except the bridge. Everything here is quality except maybe this and maybe this. And, and even this is passable in my opinion. Okay, enough talk about the uh, items. Let's put it together and let's see what it sounds like. Now, for my money, this bridge is either cut left-handed or it's just cut wrong. I mean, they've got a bevel on, I would call this the backside. Now, they may have done it on purpose. I don't know, but it's not the way I would do it. This this bevel would go down to the tailpiece, in my opinion, because it's beveled like this. Because you want the last place you want your string touching is on the very edge of the bridge. So, in my opinion, because they beveled it this way, it goes this way. Having said that, 
this side is higher than this side, which is typically not the case. You know, the bow is coming from this side, so typically this side of the bridge is a little lower for the bow coming up like this, and then there's an arch to it, you know. And so it, to me, it, it appears to be cut wrong. I, I'm just telling you what it appears like. I'm awful picky on this kind of thing. So there's something to be said for that. I'm going to put it the way the bevel shows it should go. Let me look at the sound post. The sound post is in there. I got to tell you, it appears, and I'm just talking out loud, it appears like the sound post may be glued in, which is kind of a no-no. But then again, I can see why they would do that on a student instrument, of course. Let me look at that and tell you for sure. Yes, the sound post is definitely glued in. And I'm sure they do that for a lot of reasons. I'm sure they would get returns like crazy if the sound post was laying in there, rolling around, flopping around. I understand their logic and reasoning behind it. Of course, if I was doing it, you know, uh, from scratch, I would definitely not glue the sound post in place. But we're going to go with that because that's the way it arrived. I'm going to see if I can just set the bridge up as it is under the tension that they've got there. I think I can. No problem. I'm going to spread the strings out to what I think they looks good. And I'm going to be looking at the, um, the bridge. You know, I like to spread the strings out a little bit more than some people do. Um, and the reason is it just gives you a better fingering, especially if I think for students, the more they're spread out, I think the easier it is to play and learn on and I also think it sounds better and it spreads the sound across the instrument better in my opinion so to me there's a lot of reasons to spread your strings out almost as far as you can go you know you don't you can take anything to extremes you understand now for my money the strings are too tight up here this is my opinion everybody's got an opinion you understand and you know how that is but you can see there's a lot of space on this side of the fingerboard there's a lot of space on that side of the fingerboard. For my money, these should be spread out a little bit more. There's real estate over here that you can be using and over here that just makes the fingering that much easier as well in my opinion. We're going to go with it the way they have it for now. I want to set it up exactly like it comes first, let you hear it, and then I may make some changes before I actually take it to the school and make the donation. But that looks good. I like to measure this and see what the length of this is, so let me do that. The standard for a full size violin is about 325 millimeters and that's exactly where we are here and what you do is you measure from the inside edge of your nut to the inside edge of your bridge run it along that E string it's exactly 325 millimeters so that's exactly where we are so that should be perfect all that's left is just to uh, tune it up and rosin up the bow so I'll do that off camera and show you what it sounds like for those of you who have never really messed with a violin or especially set one up, let me just tell you for sure that when you get a brand new bow uh, of any kind, it will not make any noise on your strings. See, you can see that and there's nothing. I mean, I'm rubbing on the strings and there's nothing going on. And you think, huh? How could that be? Well, the hair is slick. It's just as slick as not on a doorknob. <laughs> and so you have to rosin it uh, before it will even grab the string at all. Now, let me show you here. This is a brand new cake of rosin. It's also very hard to get the rosin to go on the bow. So what you do, or what I do, is I take a fine piece of sandpaper. This is like 400, and I just rough up the surface like this. And in the same direction that I roughed it up, then I'm going to rub this hair on here. That instantly makes it start to grab a little bit. You can do that two or three times. So I'm going to rub this up a little bit more. That gets a little bit of a powder going right away, and that gets on the strings right away. Then you can start to get a little friction going on. You can get the rosin on the hair much faster that way. Another thing that some folks don't know about bows is you should always keep the hair loose when you're not playing the instrument. Always loosen this up right here and let the hair go back to loose. And when I say loose, it doesn't have to be totally, completely loose, but there should not be a lot of tension. You should not have your bow straightened out under tension and put it away. You should always loosen your hair, always. And if you've got an old violin sitting around and that hasn't been loosened, then you've either got damage to your bow or the hairs are broken or something. It's just not a good combination, let me tell you. So you should go get them out of the closet right now and loosen up those bows and it takes a while to get a decent amount of rosin on a on a new on new hair and so what I do then is I actually after I get it on there on the one side I'll loosen it up 
I'm gonna sand the sand this again. I've loosened up the hair, and now I'm gonna go on the inside of the hair like this. And you don't have to do this after you get a decent amount of rosin on your bow, but at least at first, this is a good idea. And it just takes a while. We might have enough on there now to play it, so let's see. And then when you tighten up your bow, you wanna watch your bow and get about 3 8 of an inch clearance right in this area here, kind of in the low spot of the bow. And you know, something like that. That's just a general idea. But let's go ahead and see how this thing plays. Well, to be truthful, the bow needed more rosin, so I did a lot more rosining off camera. I think I've got it where it's playable now. I had a little trouble getting it tuned only because it's only got the one fine tuner, which is kind of standard on concert violins and things, and the, your best violinists probably only have the one fine tuner. But I think for a student level instrument, you probably should have all four uh, fine adjusters there. I've got it in pretty good tune. I'll go ahead and put the shoulder rest on. Typically, I don't use a shoulder rest, but we'll put one on here. And uh, it fits on there very nicely. Now, please keep in mind, folks, I don't consider myself a violin player at all. <laughs> so I can, I can get across one and play a tune or two, and that's about it. keeping it in tune. To be honest, it's got a nice sound, It's but it's even got a lot more potential, and I know that just from doing this for years. The potential would be in the bridge, in the strings, and in the nut setup. Changing those things around, putting a high-grade high strings on this, and putting a high-grade bridge on this, and cutting the bridge differently, because the bridge is just thick and clumsy, will make this instrument sound a lot better. It's not bad the way it is. Um, out of the box, it's, it's certainly doable certainly learnable. You could use it and play it the way it is. I'm going to tune it again because it just gets, it. you know, new strings, everything stretches, uh, everything's under tension, everything just keeps pulling. So it's a little hard right out of the box to keep one of these things in tune. And that goes with any violin. That's not a, I'm not picking at this violin, you understand. So let me tune it up again and we'll play it a little bit more. Well, to be honest, I'm having a lot of trouble keeping it in the exact tune. That's not uncommon for any violin. <laughs> so that's not a pick at this instrument again. Um, it's much easier with the addition additional fine tuners though and that's where I'm struggling is because when you're trying to tune it up here it's difficult and you know it's not played in yet so it's just a little more difficult out of the box but I think it's close enough to play it a little bit now Like I said, I'm not a violin player. So what I'm struggling with is a lot of the detail stuff. Um, like I said, if it had the better tuners, uh, uh, additional tuning things, I could tune it a little bit better. Uh, the strings, in my opinion, are a little bit high. I like to see a little tighter action. They're a little bit high down here. So now I'm going to put my touches to this and I'm gonna play it for you again, and I think you're gonna hear a significant difference. It's certainly going to play easier, I know that for sure. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is spread these strings out a bit. They're not terrible, but they're just not as easy to play as if they were spread out a little bit more, that's all. And they can be lowered down quite a bit more. I'm using the saw, but I'm using it like a file. If you look close, you can probably see that's where their original string groove was, and this is where I'm moving it to. So that's a significant difference. So I'm going to move it in there, and you can see there's a significant difference there. 
And now I'm going to do the same thing on the uh, on the high E string. Take it off, and then I'm going to cut the groove where I think it should be. See, there. In my opinion, their strings weren't evenly spaced either. They were close, but they weren't what I would call evenly spaced. This one is about in the right place. I'm just going to widen the slot a little bit and deepen it. This is the A string. And then the D string needs to be moved just a little bit, but not very much. You can see they're pretty evenly spaced now. Maybe this one, the A, could go that way just a hair. It's not bad though. We can move it over though, just by filing this slot a little bit. And all of them are being lowered down quite a bit too, so they're gonna be much easier to play. What I will also do is put pencil lead in there. Now the pencil lead just acts as a lubricant to let the string slide real nice and easy. And that is an ebony nut, by the way. As I'm cutting it, you can tell that for sure. And again, taking the pencil lead, putting it in there. This is a little larger pencil lead. It's a little easier to use on these bigger strings. And now I'm just checking the action, because you want it real close. You can get it, you can have it almost touching the fretboard. And I'm calling it fretboard. It's obviously a fingerboard, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I've gotten the pencil lead in all four grooves. I've got them all lowered down. I've got them all separated. So that's good on this end now. Now we're going to work on the bridge end. I think, you know, the, the quality of the bridge is reasonable. The feet set fairly well on the top. So I'm not going to spend the extra time to make a whole new bridge. I'm just going to thin this bridge down and recut it to the proper shape, in my opinion. Again, everybody has their own opinion on these things, but I'm going to thin this bridge down considerably. It's, it's really thick. The grain of the wood wants to be cut in the direction that makes it harder for me to cut going this direction. So. But that's okay, I'll get it done. And I am really going to take quite a bit of wood off of this bridge because it's just extra thick in my opinion. In my opinion, this will make it sound quite a bit better. The thing that would really help this one a lot is to put high grade strings on it. Um, the strings are much more expensive, so I'm not going to do that. For a student violin, it probably wouldn't warrant that either. They'll break the strings and it's just not worth doing. But if you wanted this instrument to sound really good, and I believe it could sound very good because it's very, you know, reasonably high quality instrument, really. I'm actually impressed with the quality of it. It's There's nothing wrong with the quality of this instrument at all, other than this bridge. It's kind of funny that the, the bridge would be, you know, a considerably lower quality piece of material than the rest of it, in my opinion. I'm sure they're just using what they've got on hand, but this will make it sound quite a bit better. It lets it vibrate better. You can see all the wood I've carved off of it here. It's, it's not an insignificant amount of wood, so you can see there, there's, there's quite a bit of wood, and there's more here that I didn't get picked up, but they'll give you some idea. I'm just now trying to straighten it all out. It's not that it couldn't even be carved a little more, but uh, I think for a student violin, I'm gonna stop about where I did there. Even that will make it vibrate better. And then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, cut the um, bridge down a little bit. It's, uh, for my money, it's, it's a tall bridge. I'm not worried about where the strings are at the moment. I'm just setting it there so that I can use a pencil to mark this. Again, a lot of my setup stuff, I try to show the most practical way to do something. And, in, and for my money, taking a pencil like this and laying it on, on your fretboard, a sharp pencil, very sharp point, then that gives you a pretty good indication where how high your strings should be. If they're much higher than that, then you've really got, you know, you're, fi you're kind of fighting it, you know. Um, see, on this side, it's not too bad, but on this side, it's quite high, I think. And that's what I was saying before. I think they cut the bridge backwards, in my opinion. They may have intentionally put the bevel on the wrong side for some reason, or it may have been a left-handed bridge. I don't know. But I can just tell you, it, would, it wouldn't have suited me, and it wouldn't suit most uh, violin players that I know. But now I'm going to go ahead and cut, and I'm going to just barely leave that pencil mark that I made on there. I think you can probably see it there. That will give it a better feel when you're playing it. It probably doesn't look like much, but 
but I took considerable height off this bridge. That's going to make it much easier to play. Also now, my hand here would be the peg head end. This would be the tail end back here. So this now has the right angle for your bow to come up over this like so. And then you can dip over and get that bass string on the other side. And so that's, that's a much more normal cut, in my opinion. Let's put it back on here, spread the strings out, and tune it back up. I changed my mind. I, I decided I'm going to level this off a little bit more. And I've got some 220 sandpaper here. And where I carved it on that one side, I am now going to just smooth that out and get rid of my carving marks. And that just about does it right there. I carve them pretty flat when I carve them. I used to using that tool and I can carve it almost flat, but there will always be marks no matter how good you carve it. And this will get rid of those marks. That looks fine. In my opinion, it's probably still on the thick side even after removing all of that wood. So it's definitely not too small, but, for, but it's still sturdy as a uh, student violin bridge. I'm just separating these by eye. You could get down and measure them if you wanted to. But I think that's going to be fine. Now the action is much lower. I'm going to measure the distance, 325 millimeters again. A little bit close, not bad though. Okay, the other thing you want to know about the um, bridge is that it's always perpendicular to the top. If your bridge is leaning forward, you've got a problem. And they all pull forward as you tighten them. So you need to constantly keep your bridge straightened up. The way I do that is I put two fingers down at the bottom and I put fingers at the top and I, with my fingers at the top, I pull it back and straighten it up. And the, the two fingers at the bottom are important because if you don't hold it still, it'll flop out on you and the whole thing will collapse. So you, you want to make sure you, you know, do it very carefully. And that looks pretty good. Double check my length. I think I'm on. Yeah, I'm right on. So we're good. I'm going to tune it up again and we'll come back and play it for you. Well, as I often do, I got ahead of myself. I'm not going to string it up and play it yet. I'm going to put the additional fine tuners on here. I've got some old fine tuners you know, from other instruments over the years. And I'm just going to donate these to the cause and uh, it'll just make it that much easier for whoever gets this violin at the school. These are uh, not gold. The, the one that's on here is gold colored. I don't have any gold colored ones. So I'm going to just switch them all over to the silver. I'm not going to show any more of this. I'll just set it all up and show you what it sounds like. Well, I'm not going to lie to you. That was not an insignificant amount of uh, setup work. Uh, it took a little bit of setup, but we got the bridge cut down. We got the fine adjusters on here. We separated the strings quite a bit. We cut the height of the bridge down. The action is lowered at both ends. And let's see what it sounds like now. I've decided I'm going to play the violin standing up. Um, now that I have it set up well, I can, I'm can. i sure I could do a little better job playing it this way. I think it'll uh, come across a little bit better. Uh, it's a pretty darn fine little violin in my opinion. too bad. Again, I'm not a violinist. Don't try to even pretend like I am one on YouTube. But uh, let me try that other tune that we played first.
excellent violin to learn on. Really high quality. Everything about it except the points that I made. The bridge, the uh, shoulder rest, average, case kind of average, bow very good. The bow is really very good bow. <laughs> much, much surprise here on the bow and uh, much surprise really on the quality of the wood and everything else in, in the appointments. All the appointments are really fine, but just to uh, surmise what we did, we put on uh, the fine adjusters here. I cut the bridge down in pretty much every direction, thickness, everything. Recut the nut so that the strings are a little more spread out and the action is a much closer to the neck now, so it's much easier to play. So overall, a very nice violin. Now we'll review very quickly the uh, lesser instrument that they sent along also, which would be like, I would consider this their first chair instrument um, and I would consider this high quality enough to play first chair in pretty much any school orchestra. And in terms of the next one, it's to be seen. I haven't even opened the case yet. So here we go. Well, as I said, I would consider that first instrument a first chair instrument uh, in pretty much any school orchestra. Even, you know, even high school level. I mean, I think it was a, that kind of quality. This one, I don't know. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be, you know, a, a more beginner level model. But we'll see. Now this is just, instead of the oblong case, this is more like the uh, what they would refer to as a fitted case. First glance, looks pretty good. The bow, I can tell instantly, is a lot cheaper. Top of the instrument looks halfway decent right at the beginning here. I, I'm not sure yet. It comes with a little clip-on tuner, which is pretty cool. Comes with strings, another uh, shoulder rest. They also both came with a like kind of a instruction book here or you know, for tuning and maintaining, etc. Which is, you know, good to have, especially if you're new to this kind of thing. The bow, I can instantly tell, is nowhere near the quality of the other bow, but it's probably adequate. The uh, frog is lesser material. It's not ebony for sure. Even the way it's put together is definitely lower quality. There's just a lot of lesser quality about it. The kind of wood is definitely a, a different cheaper wood. There's some weight to it though so that does make me have some hope that there is some weight to it. You, a real light bow just isn't very fun to play with. I think it's going to be adequate. I first thought it was real horsehair but it may not be. It kind of appears like it is horsehair but I'm not sure. This may be a synthetic. The other one I was just instantly sure so more than likely this one is a synthetic but but I'm, I could be wrong. This could be real horsehair too. Parts of it feel like real horse hair. There was one bad hair there. I was just, maybe it is real horse hair. I'm not sure about that part. Melissa can verify that. It does have rosin with it as well. I think that's it. The uh, case is um, just, you know, minimal quality. I'll just say that. It's not terrible. It's just, but it's not anything special. The uh, wood, I, I'm not 100% sure on this top. Parts of me say it's real wood and part of me says, no, it's not. Let me get my close-up glasses on and maybe I can tell. They've got it painted in such a way as to disguise it, it looks like. Yeah, it's it's a real wood top based on what I can see. So it does look like it's still a solid spruce top. The back, I'm not so sure. I believe the back may be solid maple also. I don't think think it's a laminate based on the edges and everything I can see. So it does appear to be a solid wood instrument. The fingerboard I think is painted. The tailpiece I believe is painted. This shoulder, this chin rest I'm pretty sure is painted as well. So I don't think these appointments are a real ebony, but that's okay. You know, it's a beginner level instrument. It looks to be, you know, fairly well done. They put the bridge in paper under here to keep this from scratching. On this one, I'm, I'm only going to do a minimal We'll set up on this one, but uh, I'll do that off camera. We're not going to take any time on camera on the setup because basically it would be the same thing. This bridge appears to be cut correctly compared to the other one, but I will tell you that it's more or less, I don't know, just kind of a mediocre job. I, I'd even go so far as to say kind of a poor job. In terms of quality of wood, the piece of wood itself is probably a little higher quality. Overall cut is more or less correct, but they did kind of a I don't know, kind of a mediocre job on the detail, I guess you'd say. But uh, it's sufficient, probably, as it is. I'm going to play it as it is first, you know, out of the box. I'm not sure if it'll set up without taking the tension off the strings or not. It looks like it will. The uh, action is very high. The string 
separation up here is is poor in my opinion you know it just isn't that great there's a ton of real estate on this side less real estate on this side and the actual spacing is close but not real i wouldn't call it perfect i'm going to go ahead and spread the strings out on the bridge here and again just by eye really i'm going to measure where the bridge is to see if it's close pretty close but it'd be a little better the feet actually do fit the top pretty well not quite as well as the other one okay we're gonna tune up and all that off camera okay here's the uh beginner grade violin uh, out of the box I didn't do any extra you know tricks to this this is just out of the box just set up with what they gave us you know I didn't take any tools to it at all at this point It's not bad. It's really not bad. Now, some of that is that this bow needs a lot of rosin. You know, it's really hard to get a new bow ready to play. It really is. I'm not saying that for the video here. I'm just telling you that's a black and white fact. To be honest, it actually sounds pretty darn good for a beginner level instrument. I would say that uh, I have heard a lot less quality than this on beginner level instruments. This is a pretty good beginner level instrument. not bad. It's not bad at all. I don't know what this one cost. I'm going to go out on a limb here and I probably shouldn't do this because again they were nice enough to send these to me. So I have no idea at this moment in time what these actually cost. I'm just going to assume that if you paid $150 for this outfit you'd be very much getting your money's worth. If it's less than that you're really getting a good deal. On the other one if you get it for $450 uh, you're getting a pretty good deal. If if you get it for less than that, you're getting a steal. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. I truly do not know what they cost. So I'm saying roughly $150 for this outfit for the cheap one, roughly $450 for the other one. I'm sticking my neck way out going out on a limb because uh, that other one, to be honest, it could even sell for more than that. It really could. It's a pretty darn good quality instrument. This one is a good beginner level instrument. It's got a good sound. I am going to go ahead and do some tweaks to this and make it better and then we're going to donate it to the school. I'm not going to show the uh, after effect on this one on camera because I don't think it's going to change the sound much. It's just going to make it easier to play for a student. That's the only goal here. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed the review of the Glary Musical Instruments. It was nice of Glary to send those to me for review. I am going to donate them to a school if I'm able able to get into the school, I will show you some video footage of that as well. Well, friends, we're in luck. Uh, before uh, we end this video, we happen to get a visit from Chris from the Newburgh High School, and we're donating both of these violins to the uh, Newburgh High School. So, Chris, here you go. Well, thank you, sir. It's been a kind of a dream of ours to start a string program for a long time, and it's, it's generosity such as this that okay. will... Uh, will help ensure that even students who can't afford an instrument uh, will be able to, well, uh, to glad, enjoy it. Glad Thank to hear you it. so much. I'm just glad to help. Be sure to uh, check out these instruments if you need a, a beginner level instrument at glarymusic.com. Thank you so much for watching.